Big Boy Big Neighborhood, boy. welcome to the neighborhood. Woo. Shaq West, welcome to the neighborhood, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you you good on your headphones? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I heard that, man. I, I was just uh, talking with him off air, man, about how he's uh, helping me raise my kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> is it is it crazy? Like the takeoff that it feels like you've been you've been on because you you know you put the work in and then you start to see like okay wait so it's really happening right now. Nah, I mean that's the reason why I put in the work. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And um, that's the real reason why I focus. And you know I got. Be a certain way, you know, because where like does that thing. hustle come from, though? With, with with everything that that you do at so called such a young age, you know, I'm from Harlem, New York. So in New York, everything's like a hustle and bustle world. But my parents are also immigrants. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom and my dad, you know, they're from Senegal, West Africa, and you know, I'm like first generation child of immigrants. So my whole life, you know, my mom stressed to me that she only came here for us to go to school and she's gonna go back put home that burden all on you know just like damn yeah, mama so, damn so it's just like my whole life you know we we really grow up with like this you know burden yeah. on us knowing that we got to be successful or we got to be good or like we the can't burden be like and the determination huh exactly did, like, they, did they get the the music thing or did they want you to go a different route oh man my mom didn't understand the music at first my mom was like a big reason why I didn't do a lot of things in my career mm-hmm. aside yeah. from music. You know, when I was modeling, my mom was the reason why I stopped modeling. Why? She sent me to Africa. She yeah, wanna... <laughs> we got to get into that. So did, did mom send you to Africa or you just went to Africa and, and they they pretty much like you ain't going back home? My mom sent, yeah, my mom sent me to Senegal. Uh, why? West Africa like that because when I was modeling, you know. Because you were doing good? Like, like, I was doing real good as a model, but you know, it was real time consuming. And I was still in school. Mm-hmm. You know, Young. I was putting that before school. I was putting that before coming home on time or just coming home. You know what I love about that is that she took the the mom, he is taken yeah. away from school, everything as opposed to the career, the money we can get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. she saw a much bigger picture. Yeah, so. Like with me, I would have told my son, keep modeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> man, keep making well, that money. I think we got something here. Yeah, so. but you know, like my culture is not really like that. Right, you know, right. I don't really care about that type of stuff. Damn. You know, she, 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 the moral part of it, she was always like, you know, I want you to be a real star. Like I want you to be the brand, not the model. Like, you know, she will always be like. Could you understand that then? No. Yeah, hell Because, no. you know, I'm from the projects. I live in a one-bedroom apartment with four people. Yeah. And I make it about a couple thousand dollars every couple of show or, you feel me, a photo shoot or something like that. I'm going to want to keep doing that, especially when I'm 17 years old and I'm young and I could go get my mom Could you bread. understand what your mom was trying to tell you? Like, did you just look like, mom, what? I couldn't. I really couldn't. I was in Africa. And, you know, that's the place where I really got my mom right. And I Before really we get there, so you're modeling here. Mm-hmm. And then your mom say, okay... You you neglecting school. Your focus is not as much. Yeah. And when did she tell you? Like she was seriously like, I'm going to send you. To she Africa. really tricked me. Oh. She tricked you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She tricked me. So what? How how did she trick you? So I had like forged my own passport. Like I did my own paperwork for my passport because I was trying to go to London with my <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I gotta walk these runways, Mama. You ain't understanding. No, nah, it wasn't even that. I was always making music, you know. Okay, but gotcha. I was gonna go to London to really. My friends were. They, I was working with this group called the Spaghetti Boys, mm-hmm. where it was three of them, you know, and they was gonna work on their clothing and things like that, and I was gonna work on my music. So while I was in London, so that's why I really, you know, was forging my passport, doing all of that because I was playing basketball that year, and mm-hmm. then. Uh, modeling really severed my ties with my coach. You feel me? Because I was like leaving practice or I wouldn't come to practice. To so was the modeling casting. thing really about, it, it was going, huh? It was. It really Damn. was. Damn. It really was. Like in New York, I was like the only young, like black kid. You feel me? That was like, I don't know, from the hood or Dude, things like that. at you know? 17, something like, you, I, and you can't, you can't understand. And like, it wasn't like how it is now. You right. Know, it wasn't like even digitally mm-hmm. as, Right, 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 right. Like, modeling probably is bigger now because of the internet or media. Mm-hmm. So you, you forged your passport. Yeah, I forged my passport. <laughs> my mom ended up finding out. I tell her I went to, but before I went to London, I thought I was going to be there for a minute. So, so I you her, did go to London? I went, but I was 17 years old on a brand new passport. So they like, whoa. like. Did she how? know you were going to London? She did last minute. <laughs> Oh, right before I took off, I let her know. <laughs> right. But then when I got there, you know, they ended up sending me back. So much things. And then my mom asked me. So I'm traveling, you know, I'm lit. She asked me, like, yo, you want to go to Africa? Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I want to go to Africa. You know, because I was always interested in my culture, me and my family. And I've never been. 
you know, and I used to feel like I was left out. Well, they told me I've been, but I was, like, young. Right. So they don't remember, really. Yeah, so it was just like, yeah, I want to go. You know, so when oh. I first, so my mom <laughs> like, all right, you're going to go for two weeks. So when I say I packed, like, nothing. Yeah, you like, I two weeks. I came back from uh, London, I lost all my clothes. So oh. all my material things that costed a lot of money, I lost all my luggage. So I didn't have none of that. Damn. Though. So I went to Africa, like, fresh, like, brand new, with, like, a couple basketball shorts, like, you uh, know, a lot of, like, uh, underwear, uh, 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 just some <laughs> shirts and thugged it out. For, like, like, yeah, you're like, two weeks, I'll be back at the crib. Yeah, but I was yeah. gone for, like, a whole summer and a little bit of change, like, you know? Like, how long were you gone, gone? I was gone for four months. How was that experience for you? Dude, you might think four months not that long. Yeah. But four months in Africa with no phone in a place you've never been before, yeah. with food different, the weather different, the Everything people different. Is, yeah. That's like, like, like you, it's that's shell shock. Like, you said it's Mules horses. Like, and it's not squirrels. It's like yeah. sheep walk past you. Yeah. Because you're, you're coming like, from New York. And especially York. coming from yeah. Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't walking down city the city yeah. world. Like, and you ain't like, seeing no sheep just like, hey, you see a rat. You ain't seeing yeah. no sheep. Big old rat like, in New York. Yeah. So yeah. did they take your passport? So like your family? Got, yep. As soon as I got to Africa, I was there for only a couple hours. And I met my brother for the first time. And I was just like in a shock. I was like in a culture shock. At first, because it was like, man, it's so... I'm from Harlem, where it's like black culture, a lot of black people. But everybody, everybody around me was everybody, black. Everybody, everything. It was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, I really started... It, it made me smarter, like, so quick, because I started realizing, like, yo, America really is diverse. You know, like, it really is, like, a big mixture of, like, a lot of us. Like, some, it's probably so many different races in this yes, room yeah. right now. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it was just like... that. That was... I was like, wow, like, this is where, like, I am, where I belong, where... I never felt like people was like, you know, how do I say this? Stereotyping me. Ooh. You feel like me? Like over there. Yeah. Like, like we all, we all. Because, I mean, it was a stereotype in a way like, oh, he's American. He got right, money. it's different. You know, but it wasn't like, you Right, like, like, like what we get here. Yeah, like it wasn't. And that's, that was one thing I started, I started really seeing like love. Mm -hmm. Like for what it is, like before family, you get to the love mm -hmm. and the family, for what it is. Your brother, how did your brother get your pet? Did he just say like, "Let me see your picture"? Or <laughs> so my brother, <laughs> he, he asked me for it. You know, my mom, she was smart. She knew I had, you know, made my passport or whatever. So she asked, she told my brother to do it. And in Africa, in probably a lot of places, you know, family and like your mom and dad, you listen to whatever they say. Yeah, it goes, mm -hmm. and that's what your other family members too. They even before you, you know, here like you might be more loyal to your brother, or your sister before you loyal to your. Yeah, you might your keep parents. a secret away yeah. from your yeah. parents and stuff like that. Out there, they don't keep no secrets. Like you might do something, they be like, "Dude, we are gonna have to tell mom somewhere." Like, yeah, you be like, man, so, we call that snitching at the crib. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, you feel oh, me? So but I guess I'm here. But that's what I was really on. Like, yo, like y'all not that loyal. You feel right. me? <laughs> like, yeah. like you, my brother. So I trusted him. You know, he was like, you know, this Africa, you never been here before, like. You know, people don't kill and things like that, but people, everybody still, like, yeah. somebody might steal your passport, travel on your passport, like, it's things people do, but they was just gassing me up, you know, to and just you get my passport. Over. So, and I handed my passport over, that was the worst decision I could have made, but the best decision I ever made. Right, right. A after you kind of look at it in your rearview mirror, exactly. you're like, yeah, but it, like, when you're looking forward, you're like, oh, man. Because it was so many, I had so many campaigns where I was going to really start making big money as a model and things like that, and I was missing out on it, and I used to be like, damn, like. You know, I miss out on all this bread, but it's like, I ain't really miss out on nothing. Right. You feel me? It was like, it's like a lot of things are really a mirage. You know, maybe that was mm -hmm. God's way of, you know. Teaching you something greater. Showing me that mirage. And I can still model to mm -hmm. this day. Right. You feel me? I can still do my thing or whatever. But now, you know, my mom, is she appreciate the fact that I'm a brand. You know, that I am a role model, that people can look up to me. And, you know, that's something she always coached me through, too, because I grew up Muslim. Yes, sir. You know, so we grew up in, like, not... It's, it's a strict religion, but it's a strict in the way of life, in the way you live, the mm -hmm. way you talk, the way you speak. Like my mom wouldn't want me to do an interview talking all types of crazy or whatever, and she watch it and it get back to her. Right. You know, well, so. you shouldn't have came here. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what you doing now? <laughs> so, when you, so when he takes your passport, you know after a while, like after two weeks, you're like, oh, okay, I'm here now. I knew Conde immediately because, you know, you fly into the capital city, the same day, they took me from the capital city, which is the second, they took me to the second biggest city, mm -hmm. which is the religious city, though, which is like You ain't doing strict, nothing there, huh? Where it's like people there don't smoke, people there don't drink, you know, girls don't wear super revealing clothes, you know. It's like 
kids don't really play a lot of games. They all go to school. Like, you know, like sports, not something big there. Mm-hmm. Everything is about like knowledge and education. And I know about this place though. So, but I got a lot of family there. So the first the first day, even the day I land, my brother asked me for my passport. We drive four hours out to the city. And I'm like, why are we going here immediately? You know, but in my culture is always right that you got to go see your family. So right, I'm thinking right, like, right. you know, I'm about to go see my family. But then they take me to a religious leader, but not any regular religious leader. You know, my country is kind of feudal. You know, we have a, 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 a sect called Muridism. You know, Muridism is a part of Islam called Sufism. And Sufism is a part of Islam where you devote your whole life to God. Wow. They took you there? They took me to like the Sufi city, you know? And I'm a Sufi Muslim myself. Right. Where like we devote everything Did you to think God. that you were going to have to give more than, were you rolling up like, uh-oh? Nah, I knew for sure I was probably going to be there for like two years. Two years, three years. I'm probably still supposed to be in Africa. Right so what, how did you get your passport back in when, when oh, after like yeah. almost 100 days? How did so, you leave? So, you know, with the religious leaders my mom took me to, a lot of people in Africa can't even get close to these people. These people are like the kings. They like the people who make the decisions, you know, in your community, things mm-hmm. like that. But when I went, I went over there with, like, hair. I had a lot of hair. And they don't, they don't rock with that. It's, like, weird for a man to have a lot of hair in my country. So the religious leader didn't even want to greet me. He didn't want to say hello to me or anything. Because your hair. Because he's like, go cut your hair. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> Cut my hair, you know. I've been yeah, how much Harlem did you have in you at that oh, moment to like cut my hair? Like. It was crazy. The day I went over there, I had a grill in my mouth. I had like, oh, a chain. My goodness. It was crazy because you know what they, happens they really when life. the doors close on no, the plane. I was like, I was like, I know if I pull up on him, because uh, yeah. that's things I know they never that? seen before. Yeah, like a lot of people never seen like all a grill, mm-hmm. like yeah. gold teeth. For how different was the world when the airplane doors closed? You know, when you take off, then when the airplane doors open, you mean like when I landed it. So first of all, when you first like landed in any place, you could see the city from a high, mm-hmm. you know, and seeing Senegal from a high, you know, I was just seeing like, like you fly in with the ocean and then it's like everything changed. It's like, you know, when you're watching Black Panther and they're like really flying yeah. into Wakanda. <laughs> it's like, you're like, oh my God. You're really like, whoa, like. And you know, everything had to look different. Everything was different. Every everything, food, drink, you know. And then the religious leader, you know, he knew I didn't want to cut my hair, and I really knew a lot about my culture. And I let him know. I said, "Man, this hair belonged to me," you know. And the, my, and I said, "Sufis devote everything to God." You know, doing wrong to somebody who is God's creation is bad in my, you know, religion. You hit him Sufism. with that. So I hit him with the like. I was like, "Yo, like." If I cut my hair, it belonged to me, and it's going to make me feel some type of way. You know, you still got your hair or whatever. I'm like, so he's like, whoa. Like, he's like, ah, he know. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like whoa. Like, he this. called your mom like, yeah, he know a little bit more than what I thought. Yeah, so <laughs> immediately, that's but that's exactly what he did. You know, he's like, how would this kid know that if this kid is such a bad whatever that his right. mom is talking about? Yeah. You know, because my mom kind of exaggerated. Cause I would, <laughs> to make sure I came you got home, there, huh? Yeah, if I came home with a lot of bread, my mom like, he's selling drugs. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So she would say that to like those type of people. And it was just like with him, with them, they got so much, you know, love too, mm-hmm. you know, and they don't really want to do nothing wrong on you. And they know you young. They know Africa, not a better opportunity for you. So what they did was they kept me around them for a while and they groomed me, mm-hmm. you know, when they would talk to me every day, they'll tell me you got to move like this. A man got to be like this. Like, you know, like you got to run your house like this way, that way. And, you know, uh, as soon as I finished that, you know, they persuaded my mom, like, you know, you got to let him come home. I didn't finish high school. I didn't, a lot of things. So she doing. she made wow. sure, she it was like, so get him, you got to go now. Yeah. Even if it was the modeling career, school, everything. Yeah, she but you did care. learn a lot from that. That was I a learned, lot of tuition into the, the school of experience. Like, I thank huh? my mom for that, you know. I was I was at a point where I'm like, I felt so betrayed. Right, yeah, because you, know, you got to be thinking yeah. you're messing up my life. But nobody can understand, like, what a mom's love is. Definitely you know, yeah. and, and And how a mom feel or think, you know? Yeah, what was the biggest takeaway from that four-month experience for you? Being alone. Mm. Mm. You know, one thing is, like, when I went, I had my iPhone, but I didn't have no SIM card mm-hmm. to have a any type of internet or anything. So you're just looking at it. Like, so damn. really the only way I was connecting to things if if i had a hot spot of somebody's phone or if i went to a place that had wi-fi mm-hmm. you know but we talking about a place where a lot of people just I not mean, learning what wi-fi mm-hmm. is and things like that so it was like i had to live every day without my phone 
without. Did any of the homies wonder like where did you go? Yeah, my friends. Whenever I got connection, I would hit my friends, and I'm, I mean, a lot of my friends knew what happened. Right. Yeah. You know, they knew where I was, and they was on the free shack. Free Shack West. Right, right. Oh, no. Bring <laughs> Shack home. Yeah. Bring them home. <laughs> Bring them home. And, you know, it was... They definitely wasn't going to get you, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was, it was a lot of things. Have you, you been know? back since then? I haven't. And I'm really Are planning. you going back? I'm really planning. So I wanted to go this You're going to hold your passport, though, huh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in my pocket. That mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for everybody be like, man, check this show up to the show. <laughs> Where is He's he in Africa. He's you in know Africa. What I'm They're like, all there. We got to talk about the success of Mo Bamba. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty, man. Did you know, did this feel like a hit to you? You know, Mo, Mo Bamba himself, the, inv- the individual, the basketball mm-hmm. player, he always been intriguing to me. You know, because of his name, Muhammad Bamba. Yeah. You know, now in Africa where I was, Bamba was the saint. Like, in the place I remember, I said I was in a religious city. Yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. who built that religious city, his name is, is Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba. That's what my mom named me after. That's why wow. everybody called me Sheikh or Sheikh. Mm. You feel me? His name is Hadimur Rasul Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba. So, in my whole like, Community, the word Bamba was crazy. That's why when I used to grow up with Mo, I used to be like, yo, your last name, Bamba. Just Did he like, know, no? Did he know what Bamba? Yeah, I mean, Mo probably don't know, but his father and stuff yeah, know, yeah, yeah, really yeah, know yeah, about Bamba from, because, yeah. you know, in uh, Africa was a big place that was colonized and, you know, like the French people tried to wipe out Islam and Bamba was the one person who stood up against the French people and liberated West Africa to still have Islam there. And that's mm-hmm. why people celebrate Bamba so much. So me, honestly, I knew, I was like, once I know this man's name is in this song, I said, like, this song going to go crazy just because of Bamba name in it, I swear. like. Damn. Let me ask you, though, yeah, with, you with, your, with your mom being in the position that she's in looking out, you going in and you sitting with, like, kind of almost royalty in, in yeah. Senegal, you know what I'm saying? And then when you come home and you make this record and there's, there's, there's something pure about that, and then the lyrics, did your mom trip off of anything, like... Nah, <laughs> like what I are mean, you saying you here? You know, I really tripped over the lyrics. Okay, you know, because I used to be like, "Man, like this song is like explicit." Yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? But in reality, like deep down, you know, I got like attachment with the song because of who I named it after. Mm-hmm. You know, and I named it after more than just Mo Bamba to me, because Mo Bamba to me is like more Bamba. Right, 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 right. Get, like in my mind, it's like more of Bamba, and Bamba mm-hmm. is the saint. You get what I'm trying to say? And he left, like, in West Africa, a lot of, like, teachings and learnings. Those were a lot of things I was reading mm-hmm. when I was there, like, the ways of life. And he write just mad poems and things like that. So I always used to think, like, of it bigger. You feel me? But with the lyrics and stuff, it meant a lot to me, too. Mm-hmm. You know, because just in the way I make music, in the way I, like, compared my life to Mo's life, you know, I felt like we was at the same place. You know, I felt like I was always getting the attention I always wanted from playing basketball. I used to play right. basketball a lot. I started getting from the music world. I started feeling like an actual recruit. I started feeling like... Why in the video? What happened to you when you was in the... Uh... So the Mo Bamba video, I was actually supposed to be like playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was supposed to be like a basketball game where like, where like the scouts yeah. were watching us like, this guy's crazy, like, you know, but then I'm also an artist. But then the day before my music video, the day before. I was playing basketball and then I hurt myself. Oh, and then when I hurt myself, I couldn't shoot the video, but I told it was super cold. I told my manager, I'm like, nah, I don't want to cancel it. So I'm like, let's just go buy a, sc- a motor scooter. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't stand on, cr- I had crutches. I yeah. was like, I can't stand on the crutches all day. So then I just had the motor scooter and we just did the music. How long were you, you it in the worked. boot, right? I was early. in the boot for like three weeks, four okay. weeks. Yeah. At no point you ever thought about uh, not shooting it that day and waiting a month? Nah. But that worked too, though. You know? <laughs> I really did. Yeah, it did. Like, it like did. that worked. I really wanted to shoot it that day, you know, and even with my music videos, it's like a big process I'm a part of. Like, I'm not the artist where people write songs for, mm. write treatments or do stuff like that. I feel like when you're an artist, like, you are the art. Like, you have to be yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that comes kind of from everything with, with your music, fashion, mm-hmm. just everything. Yeah, it's just like, I like, and that's what Mud Boy is, it's just... Coming from the mud, learning to do like nobody taught me how to do things. So I did. I love myself. that mud boy. Ooh, yeah. that, that's like, that's like for real. Like I'm coming from nothing. nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and see 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 what mud really can create though mm. too. Yeah, a lot. You know. You know? So with, with the actual song, and and when I asked you, you say you kind of felt like it was going to go because you knew what the texture was. I mean, you know, when you in the studio and you create something fire, you just like, yo, this fire. You know, but me. In the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, like this is gonna be crazy. One because Mo Bamba, 
just him and he's just so interesting and intriguing just mm-hmm. as a person. He's a great person, a great kid, and a great basketball player. You know, I knew it was going to go crazy because of that. But in the back of my mind, I always had, like, my own Bamba message. You feel me? So, What does that feel like performing at? Or when you just see, you know what I'm saying, when you just see the sway off? You know, I really feel like I got other songs with way more energy. You feel me? So it'd be like, if you really came to, like, a show of mine, you know, it's an energy roller coaster. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Where it's like, you know, it's coming type thing. You know, but it's, it's just, just like, like I get tired there. It though. might be that <laughs> yeah. might be. I'll be feeling like that's like the weakest energy compared to other songs. Like it'd be crazy, but it'd be like. Did you ever trip off more? the attention mm. of of it, and then was like, man, there was a couple y'all missed, or there's oh, something. Nah, that, yeah, it's just. I mean, with me sometimes too, I'd be like, you know, a lot of people lay or right, right, right. A lot of people like. But you got to get us when we come on too, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? So it's 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 like. Uh, it's a lot of people that's going to probably still be catching on. Yeah. You know, and with making music and the frustration that comes with music is a lot of people don't know it takes time. You know, mm-hmm. like, people really just get caught up in the mirage of seeing people, like, be born overnight. Mm-hmm. And right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. supposed to be like that for them. You feel right. me? But even with that overnight person, you might not even know how long their journey been. Yeah, you and know. that's what I, I tell people all the time. And I say, people always say overnight. And I would say, man, well, it was a long-ass night. Yeah. If it was overnight, it was a long-ass night. Yeah. How did your relationship with Travis Scott come together? Uh, I met Trav on his tour on the damn tour. Oh, my bad, Trav. I know him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you got to call Trav. him Trav. My bad. Yeah, so how, how did your relationship with you and Trav come about, man? I mean, um, I met him on a damn tour. Mm-hmm. He reached out to me Whoa, whoa, watch months. your language. No, go my ahead. Fault. No, 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 go ahead. No. He, he met me. I mean, he used to text me. About two months prior to that, um, I had one of my boys was on tour with him, and my name had came up in like a conversation. And my boy, White Trash Tyler, we used to make music videos together. My boy, like, yo, like I know this kid. You feel me? Like, I got his music, stuff like that. And he and Travin was looking for artists to sign. Mm-hmm. And Tyler was like somebody like that was vouching for me. And Trav, you know, start like looking at my gram, like things like that. Like, this kid is interesting. But you got to think, he see, and now, I mean, he's moved forward a lot too, though. Yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying? Like, even with me, since I've been with Trav, he's grown so yeah. much. Like, but know? what makes you, with your momentum, and just seeing his movement, and it ain't really what it is today, what made you say, oh, yeah, 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 I'll mess with him? When you already done turned down or moved away from, or you know how to lose certain things, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, my thing was, like, dude, I was making music and stacking it and, like, playing it for people. You know, so I was like, this is my plan. Like, I was showing people what I was going to do, mm-hmm. you know. But my thing is, is, like, I always felt like I'm a real true artist. I could have did things independent, on my own, whatever. You know, when I dropped Mobamba, I wasn't signed yet. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it's just, like, I always felt like I need a real infrastructure. I always felt like I need a real team. Some like, of this real, with that. I need a real machine. But yeah. I also, I always wanted a real music family. You know, people I could grow with and, like, do, like, ecstatic, crazy things, like, break records and just do wild things and since then you know I could say me and Tribe did things like that Hell yeah. you know like we he done had his festival and like me and him got the craziest sets you know we on tour just like mm-hmm. demolishing everything with culture and just mm-hmm. like sneakers clothes like Things like that. Seems like a perfect a perfect situation for you too. Just has a group, and you know, because got, he's beyond the music as well. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying. When yeah. we start, start thinking about brands as well, man. Yeah, you know, because it's 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 real things that you know people like me and him grew up interested in. Mm-hmm. You know, and then when you really get on the platform, you could use these things or do cooler things with them or keep them cool mm-hmm. or bring attention to it. You do it. You know. What what about okay. Kanye West? So with Ye, Ye reached out to me a little bit before Travis. You know, I was at uh. Easy season five, oh. and then I um. They Were you walking it? Or I was supposed before? to be in the show. Okay. I was like fitting. It's like a fitting. You got a lot of us. And I saw them <laughs> and everything, and then um, I met a couple of yay people. They reached out to me about signing me, things like that. And I was working good music for a little bit, and you know they family and they cool. And it was to a point where it was. I came down to like my list, like a basketball player. I came like who you to gonna like, sign? With? Who I'm gonna commit to? <laughs> yeah, who I'm gonna make commit? You know. And then it came down to two people, but then it's like you know uh. Like, Kanye had reached out to Trav, like, you know, like, I want to work with Shaq, too. Like, you know, let's do this together. I, I, we family, mm-hmm. you know, and we rocked out. We did worked it together. Out. Damn. Yeah. yeah, I guess I guess that did kind of work out for you. Then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what does your mom place. say now? I mean, you know. Uh, does she understand it? Like My dad was always somebody more super understanding, you know. He's somebody who really helped 
my mom's view. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me? How she feel about it. You know, and one thing is they understand that I'm older now. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of times in my life, you know, my mom didn't like being super overprotective of me or, you know, it's just like he a man now. You got to let him do him or mm-hmm. let him make his own mistakes or, you know. Whatever. Has she came out to the, one of the shows to see you? She hasn't yet. Yeah, don't take her. Not yet. I don't want to take my mom. Yeah, to no. show. She, I she don't. Why? Because it's just so much stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, she like, yeah, yeah. that stage. She was like, uh-uh. Hey, she was like, going back to Africa. She was like, get back to Africa. Yeah, she going to try back. to change my whole thing. Yep. Like, now you got to be like this. So you gotta, <laughs> I do. I was performing. I used to perform. I used to, in the summer, I used to get so hot, I take my shirt off. Oh, no. You she know? had a problem with that? Oh, She'll my family had a big problem with that. What you doing? They will always come like, yo, stop doing that. Like, stop taking your shirt off. Like, oh, oh my God. For real. Damn. Yeah. Like, it's hot. What's wrong with him? Because it's like not, it's not, you know, it's not like manners and like my right. culture and my religion. Like, like what you, you know? doing? Yeah, it's like, what are so you doing? So they would What's call you, like, we saw you on YouTube. Uh, yep, put and you- I stopped taking my shirt off. Oh, wow. That's, really yeah. that's a good sign. What, what about on yeah. the Astro World Tour? Did, did, did you take it? You didn't take your shirt off? off? Damn. I love that, man. Yeah, I just, Same. That's you know, at one point, you probably don't know my history. I, I was over 500 pounds, right? <laughs> Word. Yeah. And I used to take my shirt off and. <laughs> they they told me keep my shirt on, but it was for a whole different reason. It wasn't religious. It was you know what I'm saying. It was just like hey, you know your crowd is throwing up like, like yeah. Can, 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 can you just complaining. Keep, can you, yeah yeah. You know what I'm saying. We got to complain. How many fines do you want to get? You yeah. know what I'm saying. So, but you know like you never know why your parents tell you certain things. Yeah man. Mm-hmm. You know and 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 honestly though it do I feel like it does help me. When your ass pass out on the stage from being hot, you gonna be yeah, gonna blame it on my mom. Him. So yeah, you really like, haven't taken your shirt off out of just out of respect for that phone those phone calls. One time I just came from Australia and mm-hmm. it was like eighty seven degrees and it was mad hot <laughs> and it was like hot hot and I took my shirt off. Like, like sorry, right before I got. I Were did you my nervous? Last song. I wasn't. But I was just like. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> telling you always put the camera down. <laughs> like, this. Yeah, Put your phones down, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get everybody Such to turn their set. phones off, please? It's hot as hell over here. Yeah, we we'll just go crazy for this one song, but it wasn't like that. It was just like so. Yeah, you can't bring hot. your mom to a show. Not now. She's not ready right now. Uh, you know, I could I could bring her to a show. I'm gonna have a special show for my mom. Has she asked to come to a show? She hasn't. Right? Yeah. You know, my mom. I don't think she really want to come. My I'm mom not with the business. Stay at nah. home, go to work. So she. That's did. like asking your mom, did you want to come see your dope house sometime? I mean, my mom. <laughs> my mom really had <laughs> a lot of businesses oh, okay. at first. You know, my mom came to America in '93, mm-hmm. and then she like hustle, hustle, hustle. Bring my dad over in '95. She used wow. to cook like African food and like serve it to all the guys who work. And then she ended up oh. opening her own restaurant. Oh, wow. In, the 90s in Harlem, and then sold her restaurant. Then she moved to Michigan. You feel me? And she came back to Did Harlem. you go to Michigan as well? No, nah, I didn't. Okay. I was born in 98. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I got an older sister. She was born in 97. Um, I'm only 20 years old. Fellow Virgo as well. I'm September 8th. Yeah, I'm Hello. Virgo September 10th. There it Rocking is. There yeah. it is. Go and ahead then, now. Um, so my mom, we was living in New York for until I was about five. So mm-hmm. until like 2003. So I was there for September 11th. Oh. I was there when all the crime it? was getting crazy. I remember September 11th, and only one thing about it is only like my one birthday. I think I turned. Oh, because you was were your birthday. It was the next I got, day. Like, I got yeah. pictures, yeah. I got oh, pictures wow. of like that crazy birthday and stuff that yeah. I had. And I was like, the one birthday I had that people used to celebrate. But then we stopped celebrating my birthday because it was kind of like. Around a weird time. And I'm from New yeah. York, yeah. so yeah. it'd be like. Weird in the city or it whatever. Felt like a little disrespectful. Yeah, it yeah, felt like, a little bit weird. So, um, when have I turned you celebrated about, a birthday now? Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah, we celebrate <laughs> we one this year that. together. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, we, well, yeah, we gonna. Oh man, the it's turn up this year gonna be real. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now that we done came together, God willing, God, sure. God, God willing, easy God willing. call, yeah. easy call. It seems like you have a really good head on your shoulders mm-hmm. in the sense of where you want your career to go. Have you had any pushback though of people trying to push you in directions that you didn't want to do? I mean, okay. not never. Are they in that room over there? You want to call them <laughs> nah, out? Nah, not oh, okay. never. You know, and that's a, a good thing about, you know, my management, my label. You know, every decision I've made in my career so far has been my decision. It hasn't mm-hmm. been like somebody, you know, putting it there mm-hmm. for me to do or like. Right, this is what we should do. Exactly. It's like, because it's, it's more so, I always feel like the artist should have the paintbrush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything is your art from the music videos. And that's why I feel like people like my music videos. Because mm-hmm. maybe I know how. They need to see it, right? They need right. To watch you, it. It's your you know? Because even when, yeah, even when you're doing it, you kind of got that picture in your head already. Yeah, and, it's and sometimes it's hard to yeah. hand that off to somebody. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to give you a reaction, you know, to the way I'm thinking. Will you go back into modeling? 
I mean, yeah. I yeah, still, same here. I, mean, me I still do. I walk a couple shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here and there. I had a little knee surgery, man, so I'm not walking the shows as much. But I think 2019, I probably get back in, man. You, you see, yeah. you see any here. weird things like backstage with models? Because you hear stories. No, nah, I, I mean, didn't. Oh, you talking to him? Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Check you answer first. My bad. I thought you were talking to me. My bad. But she said model. Go ahead. I mean, I mean, not really. Wasn't you know, uh, it's definitely a world though where I used to feel like I didn't matter. Hmm. I was like, like what does that mean? Oh, so, yeah. like, you know, because modeling is not about you. It's about the clothes. That's why they pick, you know, mm -hmm. like tall, skinny. Lanky. Cause, yeah, because these are the people that make clothes look the best. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I used to always feel like they'd be like, stand here. Like, ah, ah. like I don't like being told what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, I, you rather control things. How did you get into modeling? So I was taking a train, leaving my sister graduation. I was 16 years old. This scout just like walking around me on the train. Like I just noticed this guy just you about to whoop his ass for a second. Yeah. He's just walking, yeah. he's just like oh, kind of like just he's walking good out. circles around me. He's about like to put this, them paws yeah, on his ass. Yeah. He better hand you that business card quick. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's like another model or whatever. And then when I hopped off the train, he passed me a car. Like yo, like, I think you should model. I, I, people always told me that, right? You know, but I used to always feel like it was just like. Like whatever. you hear it, yeah. But then this was like the real deal, like the real thing. What made this one feel different? It was the real deal. The okay. real thing. Was, like, was it like a big was, agency? Did he work yeah, with a big agency? Yeah, he was like a, a real agency. He had actual models, had actual people in shows. He was a cool mm -hmm. person, whatever. So I was just, I was down with doing it. And with me, I'm like a renaissance man. Like, if I can't envision myself doing it or being it, I just won't. Right. Try you it. feel me? I won't even try it because I think I could do everything, you know? So it was just more so like, yo, I think I could do this. And I'm young, I'm not doing nothing. It's just more of a hobby. And I'm living in a place where it's like, our hobby's bad, like, mm -hmm, you know? Yeah. So it was kind of something to keep me busy, just like basketball did, you know? When do you go from being on the train to kind of knowing, okay, this is this is happening? Is it a month, two months, six Dude, months? Dude, like when I say, I, I waited like two weeks, right? Three weeks, like, and I picked up the car, called him. He's like, yeah, like, uh, Pull up, I want to like take digitals and mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, stuff like and that. And you had never did anything like that before? Never, ever. Had it, you ever did any promo pictures before? Like, like of your own? Modeling and stuff. I used to take pictures and have my own little photo shoots for like my own little album covers. Yeah, when yeah, I was a okay. Kid and uh -huh. stuff, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't like. Yeah, it wasn't like did you go by like. yourself or did you, one of your parents go with you? I was. I went by myself. Okay. Well, hell, forging passports. Right. Oh, yeah. no, I never did by himself. You know, I I do everything. He went to London by himself. Yeah. He's living his you own know, life. Our parents got to wake up and go to work every yeah. day. That's why, like, in America, we raise ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in a sense where a lot of times we grow up not knowing certain things because we raised ourselves. When you were mm -hmm. coming home with money, did your mom, your mom was thinking something else, though? Huh? I mean, I was coming home and I was giving my mom bread and stuff. And she was thinking, like, mm -hmm. like all right, cool, but. I don't I'll need your it, money. But. Dipping blue <laughs> chemical on it to see it got cocaine residue on yeah, it. Yeah, she like, she like, man, I don't, she's like, she always let me know, like, I don't care about this bread. Mm. I don't care about this money. You know, I don't want you like. Yeah, you could tell she's not American. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> My mom just like, you know, she's just like, you you better, like, you bigger, you know? That's good. I could tell, you could tell that she raised you right. Yeah. So it's all praises be to the most high. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Is it, was it good money in modeling for you? But it had to be good for anyone that didn't especially have any bread though it's not it's not bread really it takes a it takes a while to get that bread mm -hmm. and then when you get that bread it's about what you do with it cuz you know modeling not forever mm -hmm. you know you age you change somebody's going to come through with a, the same look or different look you know so modeling it's not a lot of longevity in it right. you know it's just better if you become a name around it or uh, a real talent. Yeah, make your brand around with brand. 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 So, it, it, do you think that it'll be easier now that that you've made a brand for yourself? That now, now the modeling could be a little easier. It makes more sense for yeah. me. You know, it makes more sense for me. Where now, if I walk on the show or something, I'm making noise. Yeah. You Are you careful with what you wear now? Like not for not sure. giving it up to somebody or? I mean, what you mean like my clothes and yeah. stuff? Yeah. I mean, I was super. On materials, crazy. Like, I was super big on clothes. That's why I really feel like, you know, God really did send me to Africa in the mm -hmm. way He did. Mm -hmm. You know, with me losing my luggage and lose, leaving yeah. the materials yeah, the behind. Materials and things. I had to grow in a whole new, different way. So, you know, that's just the way I look at it. You know, um, I could still, you know, I could go buy whatever I want or do it. Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you, bad? you know what I'm saying? You bad? <laughs> yeah, who, we, 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 you We're going. 
I'm going. All right, well, <laughs> let's go. What What else you got today? You got any more interviews or anything? Like, uh, yeah, I think I come in. Okay, later. okay, okay. I was gonna you say get to those later, though. Today is uh, Daniel's birthday, man. Oh, happy birthday to yeah, my boy man. Daniel, man. Yeah, hey. go ahead yeah, now. Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Give him something, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Dan, you got it, man. Happy yeah, birthday. there it is. Yeah. Give him nice <laughs> you like I'm, you like I'm going to give you this verbal <laughs> happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah, no. What's next? And I know it sounds like a cliche mm-hmm. question, but what? what's next? I mean, for Shaq West, you know, I always drop singles. I mm-hmm. drop music. I drop videos. So I'm just, I've been on tour. Mm-hmm. You know, I really trying to get back into my content and have a content for people. I want to drop a couple music videos. I'm gonna drop a couple of singles, so new does music. It, is it does it feel different with with so many new eyes watching as well? Like like okay, yeah. Now now you know, they're paying attention. It do, you know. But then that's when you that's when you say, all right, now everything gotta be like yeah, yeah, even you harder than it was. But it seemed yeah. like you was already ready for a lot of this. Like mm-hmm. you paid a lot of tuition into the school of experience. For sure. I mean, experience is the only place. Where a person could be wise, you only mm-hmm. be wise from experience. You touch a fire, you get burned once, you won't touch it again. I heard mm-hmm. that. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's just like, and that's the same thing with a uh, with a uh, vagina too. Be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, I can talk to him about that, right? You know what I'm saying? Like just just be careful with that too, you man. Right, you know, because you're going on a lot of great tours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have any kids? No, I don't. All don't righty, keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't want to sit down with you next time. And be like, I want pregnant. kids though. I want mad kids. Not right now. Mad though. kids, like, you know, like 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 like, like, like angry little like kids. Like, man, fuck that, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> mad kids like that. How many kids? That, if they no, die, how many, whatever. How many kids you think you want? As many as I can have. In my culture, no. the more kids you have, the bigger your name is, and the more lives you can change. So, man, future told us the same thing yesterday. But you're not gonna be like future, right? Like have a bunch of different baby mamas. Please don't do that. I mean, you know, I mean, in my culture, you can marry. A lot of women. No, if you got, no. if you can you got call money, my wife and tell her that I'm from Senegal? <laughs> oh. and I'm from, can, can you get on the phone and call my I wife? I'm with y'all. <laughs> tell, tell her that you, you just did like a DNA or a swab me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, it's the, and if you think about it, if you raise more kids the right way, like look at somebody like Shaquille O'Neal. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Where his kids, you know, they like basketball players. Mm-hmm. They're young, but they great kids too. Right. They're that. packed. You know, but he's a great man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm trying to say? So you get to see that translate on from him onto his children, from his children onto the other kids who are looking right. up to them. How you many, know, so. if you well, had a number, what would be that number? 10? 10? 20. Oh, man, wow. you're going you to definitely have to keep they cost a lot of money, money, though. You're going to have to Fella. stay in music and modeling, man. That's yeah. a lot yeah. of money. Fellow Cootie had like 60, 70 kids, right? Who? Fella. Fella, I don't know who he is. Fella had Talk a lot of kids. Fella's an a artist me. from Nigeria. Oh. He had 60, 70 kids? kids? He had a lot of kids, about 60, 70 kids. He died from AIDS. But <laughs> he had a lot of kids. I ain't touching that. And I listen, if you never listen to Fella's music, y'all didn't listen to his music. One of the greatest artists of all time. I know the name. Or I'm going to rewrite my Fella history. Fella Kuti, one of, the, one of my favorite artists of all time. His he son, Sean Kuti, one of my favorite artists of all time. Who are some of your other favorite artists? Wait, hold DMX. on. I got to go back. Where's my follow went from? I'm sorry. ODB. You went from. <laughs> right. He's taking us from <laughs> yeah. 70 kids, Fella Kuti, yeah. Diamond Rays, to, 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 to D- ODB, D- DMX. DMX. But that's the type of person I am. Like, yeah. I see. <laughs> all, over. Like, all over. But no, you, you love DMX? I love DMX Yeah, that's music. a good dude. I like real artists. You know, I don't like people who don't lie. Mm-hmm. No, this is a person who He's came raw. out. Uh, you know, I I I I fuck with Tupac. Mm-hmm. Personality. I mean, at times with me, it was always it was kind of like I don't know with Tupac. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I used to be like I don't know, like if he about like, like fuck bitches, get money, or is it like right? You got the, love with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to be like young, confused. Biggie, one of my favorite artists of all time. He had a different flow for mm-hmm. like every bar. His rap is so interesting, and it, and I it, think Pac was, was like people, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When people say, "Oh, he contradicted that," but that's who we are. Yeah, he that's, was such a personality. He's such a, a real thing. human. Yeah, you know, he was such a real human that had a platform on a higher level. He spoke up for so many people. So I really look up to his personality because sometimes I feel that way. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I feel like I got a lot to stand for. I feel like I will speak up against. Do you feel like you're ever misunderstood? Yeah, for sure. How come? Because, I mean, I'm coming in at a time where I'm not doing things like a lot of other people my age. You know, a lot of people Dang. might just look at Sheck West, hear a song with the lyrics I got, and they're like, oh, he's like young, obnoxious. You know, mm-hmm. but, you know, I don't got to do all the, like, dumb, crazy stuff to get my music attention. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I bring the attention to my music. And just um, sitting down speaking with you, you, you can tell that there's there's a lot behind you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and what's behind you shows that there's a lot that that's in front of you as well. I can appreciate, too, the, like, the knowing DMX yes. and Tupac. And yeah, at 20. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, all presidents be to the most high. I mean, 
that's I listen to everything I listen to older than me. Right, right. You know? But you know what we're starting to get a lot of check is we we're starting to get a lot of people kind of either they're not remembering they're trying to erase or they're disrespecting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. we seeing this this kind of this divide. You so when you man, see someone that's 20 that come in and... People can't, you can't, you know, a lot of people can't say erase because, bro, hip-hop only about 30, 40 years old. Mm-hmm. 45. You know I mean? Yeah, so it's just like, dude, we still writing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like, a lot of these people, you know, really shaped the game for us. And, and you know, I look at people like West Coast artists like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, mm-hmm. Ice Cubes. They took the sacrifices. They made the sacrifices for people like me. Mm-hmm. Type thing. Like, they wasn't making the bread at my age that like young people like me probably can make yeah man you know so it's just like that's a big sacrifice but think about it in the long run imagine what type of bread we probably be making in 10 years mm. if we keep moving correctly or if we not afraid we've always been that genre to not be afraid of anything you know and I'm not afraid of anything I'm not afraid of nothing I don't know you know, it's it's. I know. I can tell you're not afraid of being a dad ten times. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm not. At twenty, <laughs> man. At twenty, I was not trying to be no dad. No, well, you're not trying no. to be a dad at this moment. At this moment, but right? I'm not, I'm saying like I wouldn't be afraid kids. of it mm-hmm. or anything like that. You know what I'm trying to say? It's just if you're a good man, you'll have great kids. I heard that. You feel me? And they'll go a long way. And thank you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank Tell you, man. Y'all do have. Thank I'm you. pretty I sure have you, you, you. Man, I'm a fabulous dad. dad. Yeah, for sure, man. I am a I'm fabulous sure dad. Your kids listen to Shaq West. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And, and, and I'm talking up. about like for real, for no, real, and I, and, and for real. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like for real. Yeah. Like man, for real. <laughs> like you know I what really I'm saying? Appreciate that. Like. I think for real, bro. And I think you know, with kids, you know, I be feeling like it's so many. It used to be different, you know. I used to be into so many artists, but kids be so tied around certain people because they it's a lot of things. It's hard for them to understand, you know. Like rappers nowadays, not like understandable to kids. It might be a little bit scary or something. Right. Like you know, I be feeling like I gotta always be myself and be me. If my mom would have never taught me to do that if I never went to Africa and seen like my dark skin and how important it is I wouldn't right. go get tattoos and like you know not nothing against anybody with a tattoo or anything right right like do that, you have any tats I don't not one not one I heard that you feel me but it's just because in my culture it's just like our skin is such I don't know so rich yeah so it's mm-hmm. like it's such an important no part of us you know mm-hmm. type thing mm-hmm. it's like I don't know but that was really important to me, and I feel like through my image, I get to keep, you know, that Do still there. Do me a favor while you're here, man. I know I asked for a favor off here, <laughs> but I'm asking for another. Do, if you can, do a song called Do Your Homework Before You Play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and think about it. Either say Do Your Homework Before You Play Fortnite or Do Your Homework Before You Turn On Your Xbox. Mm-hmm. Whatever feels the mm-hmm. best to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do do that Do that for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the you know, parents. I don't think you're going to do it. But I don't, you know, I, I might, I might, you know, because well, might mean might not too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know what these mites mean. But I mean, I always think about ways I could connect with kids or talk to them even better. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? Does that add a little bit more pressure knowing that you do have kids that listen to you or look up to you? I mean, it don't, you know. But kids only understand such a language. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get what I'm trying to say. You can only speak to them in a certain way where they understand words, like like live Shack West, die Shack West. You know what I'm trying to say? (laughs) Or like, I don't know, like call and it's like all regular like words and I remember no. dude when my when my daughter and my son when they said fuck shit bitch I was like what <laughs> no it's bullshit I was playing with that <laughs> it's like yeah I put that in there no. I, done, I done seen a lot of that <laughs> <for like, laughs> yeah. have you, has there been a celebrity or another artist that has come up to you and they're a fan of yours that kind of tripped you out I mean it hasn't tripped me out but I done had like a lot of people go give me a couple names <sighs> top three. I think you lying. <laughs> yeah, he's I making this you, up. I mean, get him out of here, man. <laughs> he's a liar. Man, this dude, man. I'm not, You're man. not even from <laughs> Senegal, I'm either, bro. You, I, for real, though, like, on the honest level, everybody, and, like, shout out to the, the industry. Mm. You know what I'm just saying? Everybody, like, you? show me love, mm. respect from, man, name somebody. Uh, Cardi B. You know, shout out Cardi B. Beyonce? I did a show with Cardi B a long time ago. Mm-hmm. We modeled in the same show a long time oh. ago. I'm gonna start naming people that, that you'd be like, nah, not them. Uh, 
Michelle like Obama. Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't Michelle Obama. Jay-Z before Malia Obama. Ah, damn, oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't did I'm it. trying to knock him off his square. I didn't know <laughs> the show. He's like, I, didn't I got did you. the show before Malia. She done came backstage. Were you like, say what's up to your dad for me? Nah, and I, I mean, <laughs> you know, like, she, she was really Give me another passport. Up. We was at, we was at True Electro. I was in Cardi Green. Mm-hmm. I put up to Cardi Green. I'm like, oh my God. Cardi, Shaq. Oh, funny. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. dope. To be a fly on the wall there. You didn't like, ask her, like, hey, can your dad go back? Yeah. And be president Please. again? Yeah, I did it. Oh, okay. All I right. Why are you messing up for us? <laughs> yeah, Come on. Man. I don't know. Maybe that's something you had I that one did. job, man. Yeah, you, one job, you Shaq. A lot of people, though. This dude, a lot of man. Show love. You, man, you are not a representative <laughs> no, of us. No, no, no. <laughs> you was right <laughs> there in her cold. ear, and you, you, you looked out for yourself. You dropped it all. You know what I'm saying? looked out for yourself. Y'all stick around your radios. We got the traitor. My bad. Shaq West, thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Thank you guys for having me, man. Man, and it's a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, I can't wait to come back. I want to come back. Soon. All right, well, come back tomorrow. Yeah. I'll bet, I'll you know what I'm saying? It makes my yeah. job a little easier when we do these interviews. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you going to really come back tomorrow or you just... Uh, probably not. Okay. All right. Then thank you for All being right. honest now. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, now, now he want to be honest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. All I'll right. Probably, I'll be listening though. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes us feel better. I appreciate better. that, man. I'll no, but listening. thank you for coming into the neighborhood, thank man. You. And it's going to be good to continue to watch you grow. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Continue to watch you grow, man. Check West in the neighborhood, big boys big neighborhood. Boy.